Welcome back. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're going to talk about the San Martin SN013-G. An interesting sports watch that is a bit of a departure from the brand's typical offerings. Once again, a rep from AliExpress reached out and wanted to know if I'd like a watch to review for their upcoming sale. After looking over all the options, I picked this one out as I thought it was the most interesting watch available. So in case you missed it, the promotional tag was up because as far as I know, I'm not going to have to send this one back. Now, what's particularly interesting about the SN013G is its design. San Martin typically makes homage watches, but they have been branching out with some more original designs. And I think that's where this one falls. There are definitely some inspired elements here. And if someone does know a specific reference that this watch looks identical to, please let me know down below. But otherwise, it seems kind of like a strange mishmash, where the case and bracelet seem to be a combination between a Nautilus and a Royal Oak, and that's all topped off with a vintage 70s style Seiko 5 dial. It's strange, but it's also an interesting combination, which is also all powered by a Miyota 9015 movement, and that's also a little bit unusual for San Martin. Typically in this price range, San Martin has been pushing watches with a Chinese-made PT5000, so it's nice to see a good, reliable Miyota thrown into the mix. Now, throw all of that together, and you wind up with this interesting, thin, vintage-inspired, dressy sports watch. In terms of size, the SN013 comes in at 30.5 millimeters, with a width of 42 millimeters when you include the crown. For those looking for a slightly smaller watch, this is typically a great place to start at. However, the integrated case and bracelet combination do complicate matters here, as it winds up with a lug to lug of 49 millimeters. So, just because of that, don't expect this to wear like a traditional 38. It feels larger, as well as packs a bigger visual punch. But from this angle, you can also see that the SN013 is fairly thin. From the completely sterile case back, all the way to the sapphire crystal, you're only looking at 9.5mm. Which is honestly quite impressive for an automatic. Typically, this is quartz watch territory. But since the Miyota 9015 is a thinner movement, San Martin was able to take full advantage of that. And despite the thinner profile, the SN013 still has 100 meters of water resistance with a screwed down crown. So it doesn't just look like a sports watch, it's actually built like one. It's also one with a fairly solid feel to it as you pick it up, as I think it's about 160 grams, give or take a few links. The case and bracelet are the most interesting aspects of this watch. It's a mostly brushed, long, thin, flat design with these highly angled lugs that jut down which is even further accentuated by the vertical brushing. There's a small polished beveled edge on each of the lugs, and that does match up with a similar design on the bracelet, helping just to tie everything together in one integrated, striking design. For the most part, this is all keeping with what I would expect out of a Royal Oak homage. The only thing really missing here is the characteristic octagonal shaped center that is complete with screws and a polished beveled bezel. The SN013 deviates from that a little bit. There are still eight sides, and it is still a combination of linear and polished edges, but it seems to have been tweaked just a little bit to give it a more overall squarish shape. And in that regard, the center area of the case reminds me more of a Nautilus without its side wings. Although, if you see something different when you're looking at this, please let me know down below. It's all a bit subjective. But no matter what you see, the results are the same as this combination creates a very visually striking watch, and it's one that's perfect for someone that wants a lot of presents in a smaller package. And speaking of small, right there at the right, we have a very small signed screw down crown. Now, visually speaking, I think it's a perfect fit for the design, but this one is pretty small, and it's actually hard to unscrew and use. It's also here where we first get a glimpse of the logo, as San Martin is using their standard hex logo on the crown. But once again, there's a little bit of a mismatch between the various brandings on the watch. The crown and bracelet have that hex logo, but the dial's gone back to that printed cursive version. Personally, I don't have a problem with either of their logos. I just wish there was more consistency here, as it seems like every San Martin I look at has a little bit of a different branding scheme going on. Moving to the rear, we also have a case back that is secured with eight small screws. It's also one that is just breathtakingly sterile. It's beautifully done, and especially with the brushing, 
but at the same time, it just feels like there's something missing here. Probably because there is. The overall finish is good for the price, with nice crisp defined lines between the brushed and polished sections, which as a whole beautifully plays with the light. But do be aware that the bottom edge of the case has a slightly sharp edge to it, some of which may be just due to the styling, as that same sharp edge does continue along the same edge of the bracelet. And every watch I've looked at with kind of a royal oak style bracelet does seem to have a sharper edge to it, so maybe that's just something you can't get away from. But either way, just know that it's there if you're sensitive to it. Now, technically you can remove the bracelet, as it is only connected by two small screws, but finding something else that you're going to be able to use with this will prove challenging. So for the most part, you are stuck with it. And fortunately, as far as bracelets go, this one is really well made. It honestly looks fantastic, with a great finish and a solid build quality. Personally, I've always loved this style of design. It's overall very tool watchy, but the complex design and the polished sides still give it a touch of flash. It also has one of the best butterfly clasps I've ever run into. Just like the rest of the watch and the bracelet, it's very solid and well made. So overall, I'd say this is a really well made, fantastic bracelet. However, there are a few things we have to talk about here. First off, no matter how well made a butterfly clasp is, it's still a butterfly clasp, which means there are no micro adjusts. So just depending on your wrist size, you may not be able to get the perfect fit on this one, and you'll just have to settle for good enough. The second issue is that this is a pain to size. And when I say pain, I mean pain. I know I've complained about other bracelets in the past, but this one is on a whole other level. This is easily the worst I've ever had to work with. On each link, there's a very tiny screw that you first have to undo. Then you flip the bracelet over and use something to push a pin out that's holding the links together, right where that screw used to be. I mean, it sounds simple, and conceptually it is. The only problem is that everything needs to be perfectly lined up in order for that pin to go back into place. If something is off, even in the slightest, that pin won't seat properly, and therefore you can't secure the screw. With this bracelet, I think San Martin was trying to be authentic with the Royal Oak. But let's be real here, there's nothing authentic going on. So they really didn't need to go that far, just a simple screw pin would have been best. So if you happen to get this one, my advice is just to be patient, take your time, and don't brute force anything. If it doesn't go in easily, it's not sitting properly. Everything here is so small and delicate, I think it'd be pretty easy to break something. So if it doesn't want to go in, just kind of back it off and try it again. I also found it to really help if you could lay the bracelets, or at least the section you're working on, flat, and maybe even use some scotch tape just to hold things together where they're supposed to be. Once I started doing that, it seemed to be a lot easier, but there was a heck of a learning curve. Ultimately, unless you're being extremely careful, or maybe lucky, just expect a ton of fingerprints, smudges, and maybe a few small screwdriver scratches on this one before you get it on your wrist. I wound up with a few scratches on this one, but overall it's not too bad. Although it still makes me wish that San Martin had used some sort of anti-scratch resistant coating. I know that's becoming a lot more prevalent with micro brands, and here it would have been a godsend. Now, after all of that fighting, I did eventually get it on my wrist and I was pleasantly surprised at how comfortable it was. When I first put it on, the watch head did feel a tad flat, and that makes sense when you check out the rear. But it's nothing overly bad, and after a little while, I started to realize how amazingly comfortable the bracelet is. The lug to lug is a tad long, but it aggressively angles down before it hits the fully articulating shorter lengths of the bracelet and that combination seemed to conform perfectly to the natural curvature of my wrist, creating a watch that sits squarely and comfortably where it needs to throughout the day. I especially like the aggressive taper of the links before they hit the clasp, because that does aid in the comfort. So while I had a rough start trying to get this one on, I found it to be one I could easily and comfortably wear throughout the day. It's also one with a ton of visual presence. This thing is sure to get noticed. However, that's on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. On yours, it may be a completely different story. Butterfly clasps and integrated bracelets are always hard to recommend just based off of specs. These are things that I think you really don't know how they feel until you actually try them. 
So just be aware of that, and especially here with this one, because if you get it and you don't like it, it's going to be a pain to return. Let's move on to the dial, which is something I normally talk about earlier. But honestly, with this one, it's kind of secondary to the case and bracelet. The dial here is an interesting choice, and especially considering the rest of the watch's inspiration. You may see something else, but for me, this is very vintage Seiko looking. With its combination of narrow applied wedge indices and a black painted chapter ring, and all of that is then topped off with a set of Daphne hands. Some will love the simple retro look, but for me, I think this interesting case and bracelet deserve a dial and handset that are equally interesting. Overall, this is fairly simple, and the only thing really distinguishing it from a classic 70s formula is a subtle linear brushing on the dial, which I gotta say does pair nicely with the vertical brushing on the case and bracelet. The design is very simple, very straightforward, yet perhaps not the most effective one. After all, you're talking about silver on top of silver on top of more silver, so not a ton of contrast here. The one saving grace is that the design of the hands and indices combine a brush top with angled polished edges, and both of those seem to play with the light in a different way than the linear brushing of the dial. So that does help, but it's still an issue. And that's even before you take this one outside when it's bright and sunny. As you might expect, reflectivity is also an issue. When you look at all the reflective angles and edges, it just makes perfect sense. So if you take this one outside and the bright sun is at your back, don't be surprised if you're blinded by the light, or even revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night. Now, even with all the contrast and reflectivity issues, I was still able to read this one most of the time, probably like 95% of the time. So there are definitely some usability or functionality issues, but most of the time it is okay. And it's really gonna be up to you to determine if that's enough of a trade-off for just the sheer amount of visual oomph and pizzazz you get with this one. Which realistically is always kind of an issue when it comes to sports watches, as they always do seem to sit in between various styles. And sometimes it's just kind of up to you to look at it and determine if it's really you. As for the movement, we have a Miyota 9015, something I'm very happy to see in a San Martin, and something I hope they keep using over a PT5000. I think they are pretty close in cost, but the Miyota is a more proven movement, as well as one that is a bit thinner, which San Martin took full advantage of here. Now, one of the Miyota 9015's few drawbacks is that it does have a louder rotor, but how loud sometimes depends on the case and the person listening to it. But with this one and its thinner case, I think it is a little bit louder than I typically hear. Personally, I didn't find it annoying at all, but if you are someone who is sensitive to rotor noise, you might. So in terms of value, this one's typically listed around 325 bucks. But because of the sale and because AliExpress did give me a coupon code for $20 off 200 bucks, it may be a bit less. But even at 325, I think that's still a pretty good deal, and especially for a watch with a Miyota 9015. Trying to find one of those for 300 bucks these days is pretty hard. I mean, typically when it comes to AliExpress watches, value is always going to be high, and it's never really an issue to talk about. Usually the only other watches I see that may even begin to give you more bang for your buck are also going to be on AliExpress. Although, no matter how good a value this is, as a reviewer, I'd be kind of remiss if I didn't mention that for the same price, you could also get it to sew PRX. Now, it's only the quartz version of the PRX we're talking about, so value may not be quite as good, but it is one with a similar style and one that doesn't come with a risk to AliExpress issues. And those issues are things I've talked about in the past, like lower resale value and more potential headaches if there's an issue with the watch. Just trying to get them resolved with people on the other side of the planet is always a pain. Most of the time, if you order from AliExpress, everything is going to be fine, but there is always a little bit of a risk, and that is something you should be aware of. I'm just trying to shoot you straight here. Now, no watch is ever perfect, and the SN013G does have its own quirks, but as a whole, I think it's a well-built watch with just a ton of presence. It's an interesting combination of some truly iconic watches, put together in a way that creates a very clean, straightforward watch, one that straddles the dressy and casual division to create a true sports watch. So if you like how it looks and you're dead set on an automatic and you're willing to take on a few headaches while you size it, 
this could be one for you. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. As always, let me know down below what you think about this one, the San Martin SN013G. Do you kind of like this combination or would you have rather seen the individual homages? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.